we are we are thrilled and delighted to have uh, Brother Larry Booker in the house with us tonight. He is he is a treasure to the Apostolic Church. He is a treasure to this local fellowship, and we have loved you for a long time. And you are a blessing to the house of God. You are presently a vagabond in the earth. <laughs> Don't know where you are. We need a, to do a, like a where's Waldo? Where's Larry? See if we can find you on the map somewhere. I saw him in Coleman. He flitted back to Mississippi. He's on his way here. He's going to show up in some place I've never known before. Chaco Springs. But it won't matter because Isaiah 6 says the whole world is filled with his glory. It doesn't matter where you go. <laughs> Presence and the glory of God is there. He's going to be preaching in Talladega this week at a conference there. And if you can find it, you might, you might stumble into something good. But uh, we love you and we're so glad that you're here. And we are so blessed that... The wind of God has prophetically blown you our way. And uh, we've been trying to hook up for a while, but you just stay too busy. And uh, Bishop of a phenomenal church in Rialto, California. Uh, just wonderful in what God does with all of us with such miserable raw material. Has God done a miracle with your life? Is anybody here glad you're standing in the house of God and you're a million miles from what you were when, when God found you? Brother Booker, we love you. We're so glad you're here. We want you to come and take your complete liberty. You are welcome in this house. Let's make him welcome here. Praise the Lord, everybody. Great to be in Birmingham, and it's great to be inside of this now Holy Ghost edifice. I, uh, Brother Sutton, drove me by here around this building. It took about an hour to get around it. And uh, a couple of years ago, and now, here we are. I love it. This is awesome. This is just, this is awesome. Just to see what God has done and will do. If he can, if he just, if he can just find people that love him and are faithful. He just, he'll roll up his sleeves and go to work. And I'm excited for this church. In fact, when I uh, pulled up today, I, uh, I, I came here with another message completely in mind. When I pulled on a parking lot, I hadn't been on here 10 seconds. And I felt the Lord change my message. And uh, it wasn't like... I had four angels tell me to preach what I had in my heart. I just thought I would preach that. But when I pulled on the parking lot, I just, oh, I felt this. So I had a little discussion with First Sister Sutton and then Brother Sutton as church was beginning. And uh, I feel Jesus here. He's been good to us already. Woo, he's been good to us already. So I am excited. If you would, turn with me to the book of Acts, chapter 1. The book of Acts, chapter 1. I'm not going to tell you I've not preached this before. To the best of my knowledge, I've only preached this message twice before. Once at home, once at one other place. And um, it just it just feels 
so right here. I'm going to read one verse, and that is verse 1. In fact, I'm not even going to read all of that. Verse 1. I guess it is all that verse. The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. Please note all that Jesus began both to do and teach. What a God. What a God, what a God, what a God. Let's love him and ask that the word of the Lord would have absolute free course today. Lord Jesus, thank you for your presence. Thank you for your mighty acts, oh God, and your glory that's in this house. Thank you for this people. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your plan for all the endless ages. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you so much. And you may certainly be seated. I do want to say we love and appreciate Brother and Sister Sutton and their family so very, 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 very much. And uh, so when he, you know, your, your pastor is becoming a very, very popular preacher. And people are finding out. My goodness, I've been telling them for a long time about Barry Sutton and now they're starting to find out. So when you come to church and he's not here, it's because other people are starting to dip into the pool that you've been dipping in all these years. And when you don't see him in January, it's because he's out at our place, praise God. And he's going to be preaching a conference for us. Wonderful, wonderful couple of God and a beautiful family and what's being done in this this place is, is, is fabulous. In our text that we have uh, read, the, the writer Luke, he makes mention of the former treatise, have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. Well, he's referring to the book that is, we know as the Gospel of Luke. In the Gospel of Luke, in the King James Version, what that plays out to in the Greek, I have no idea. But in the King James English, it came to 19,482 words. They were written by Luke. We don't know how long it took him to pen those 20, what became in the 12th century, those 24 chapters But be that as it may, when he finished it, he was probably very, very, very thankful. We do not know how long it was after he finished it that God began to stir up his spirit again. And Luke realized that when he wrote that gospel, he was actually just getting started. Because he would have what would become 28 chapters that is known as the book of Acts, from which, of course, we read. By the time he finished writing the Gospel of Luke and the book of Acts, by way of sheer volume, he would write over 25% of the New Testament. Actually, technically, about 27% of the New Testament. 5% short of being one-third of our New Testament. So Luke was a busy man in one of the scribal entries, as people would copy, one of the scribal entries in the oldest manuscripts we have, there is a scribal entry that says, Luke died at 84 years of age in Bithynia and having Neither having never married, he was able to serve the Lord without distraction, using Paul's statement from 1 Corinthians 7, of which Luke was a part of that. And so this, this man, this very, very, very special man, 
gives us the book of Luke, but again, he was just getting started. And then when he's getting started on the book of Acts, he talked about Jesus in the book of Luke began to do and teach, meaning that Jesus was just getting started in the book of Luke. Now we're going to the book of Acts, praise God. And he's nowhere near finished. Now, a few years ago, I read how that, and this has been quite a few years ago, it was about 11 years ago, NASA had taken on another project and uh, they were developing a spacecraft that was going to charge the U.S. government, that means you and me, the taxpayers, $330 million, which they considered this a cheap endeavor in 2007. This was, this was a cheap endeavor. This spacecraft that would be shot off out of Cape Kennedy that would uh, crash into, they had it planned out where it would meet and crash into a nearby passing comet. And as it was, as it was going into that comet before it uh, was devoured by the pieces of that comet, they figured it would send back data that they could decipher and study and read and learn. And they said, we will know the origins of Earth by spending $330 million and shooting this rocket off into a passing comet. Now, I wish they would have just asked me and I could have saved them many, many millions of dollars and taken them to Genesis 1-1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Amen. Amen. That was technically not the beginning because Job tells us that, that when he formed the sun, the moon, and the stars, and that the angels were there on hand and, and, and they worshiped, they glorified. They were, they, they, were, they were basically what I would call ecstatic with joy as they watched him in the creative process of what is now today our, our universe. Amen. I just, I read a, a book a few years ago. In fact, I went through it four times. Uh, twice reading, twice on um, audio, and it's a pretty big book. And uh, it was written by a man who is an atheist. And but it's about it's a historical book. It's about history of the world, history of science, etc., etc., etc. And uh, it, it's just interesting to see where all it come from. Such as when he he's a firm believer in uh, Darwinism, in evolution, but he was honest in in the, in in regards. Because he would admit, he said, now there is a problem that even Charles Darwin didn't know what to do with and that no evolutionist knows what to do with and they have never known what to do with and they will never know what to do with it. And that is in the evolving process of beings, animals, and humans, the I fits nothing. He said it is impossible for the I to evolve or for there even to be a reason for the I to evolve. Just the I alone shatters the theory of evolution. But they don't want to talk about that. But he had the honesty to talk about it. He talked about how they came to the conclusion of the age of the universe. And it was a long, torturous um, deal. And they came up with their billions of years uh, I forget, I think it was 18 billion something, uh, of how they figured all these scientists coalesced in their thought and their data and they, they come to, but they, when it came to coming up with the, the date or the age of the earth, it was much more difficult. And that wasn't until relatively recent times with a man that worked for oil companies and he was dealing with carbon and, and, and the carbon dating process and he brought some things together and blah, 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 blah. And so after all these multi-centuries of digging into it, they came to the place, they figured the age of the earth. But they had a problem. 
They had a big problem. The problem was that made the earth older than the universe. Well, duh, I could save them a lot of trouble. Let's go to the book of Genesis. The earth is older than the universe. Hallelujah. Amen. Because it was here and, and it was on the fourth day he made the sun, the moon, and the stars. As for lights in the heaven and give directions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so uh, that kind of messes up the Big Bang Theory. And when he dealt with the Big Bang Theory, he said, he said, now here's the earth basically and it's older and, and there's this universe out there. And he said, <laughs> he said, we know that the earth couldn't be the center like of the universe. He said, because think of the implications of that. If it is, it's there for a reason. And somebody did it with a reason. And that's hard for an atheist to wrap his head around. So, so there's things. Bottom line is the book painted himself into corners in several instances. It was just interesting watching him as he applied the paint. And, uh, and so, so in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And, and people want to talk about how it just, all of this just got here. Now, the Muslims do have a great analogy when it comes to creation. They said, if you walked out into the desert in the middle of an endless, sandless, sand-filled desert, and in the middle of this desert was a great, vast mind-boggling, unbelievable palace, perfectly formed, built, rooms there, and halls, and, 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 and windows, and, 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 and minutia of, of, of intricacies, and, and designs, and paintings, and, and even, even luxurious carpets, and, and all manners of, of life around and throughout this palace that, and, and water and, and, and said, if you looked at this intricate palace that was vast and gorgeous and you would say, who built it? And you said, nobody. Just the wind kept blowing the sand long enough and we got this. <laughs> Their analogy is, that is just as ridiculous to think this, this sun, moon, stars, earth, amen, and all that's in this earth down to the intricacies of an eye just kind of showed up one day because time took... No, 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 no. Can I tell you something? Whenever God got started, he was just getting started. And we don't know when he got started. We know that, that one time somewhere in there, and I've made reference to this before, but there's an angelic host. Well, he created him. Without him was not anything made which was made. In the beginning was the word. God had no beginning. He's infinite. That's hard for our finite minds to wrap around it. And so somewhere this God, and I don't want to put words in his mouth, but, but you just, I don't know, you know, i got a small little brain and he's infinite, but, but here's God. He's just, he's God. He's God. And he's over it all and he, he runs it all, but there was nothing to run because everything, nothing was made yet. And he knew he was good and he knew he was holy and he knew he was worthy of worship and praise. And, and so one day he spoke and there was an angelic host, and all of a sudden they come into being, and they see him. Whatever they saw was whatever he chose for them to see, and, and covered this, but they, they see him, and they're created pure and holy and righteous, and, and they know he's like, ooh, ooh, and, and he's worthy, he's, and it's like, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is, and is to come the Almighty. And they just, they just, they've been doing that for a long time. Amen. 2,000 years ago, John saw him. 754 years before that, Isaiah saw him. And they were all chanting the same thing. And, and Job, and that's the first book ever penned of the Bible. All scholarship believes that. They said they shouted for joy when they saw his, his, his creation and stuff. And so they were on hand and they clapped their hands and, and God asked Job, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? And 84 questions of stuff. And the angels are watching all of this that's, that's going on because when he made them, he was just getting started. 
When he made the earth, he was just getting started. When he came to the fifth day, sixth day, when he made man in his own image, he was just, he was just getting started. This God who made man in his own image. There had been a fall. Angels had fallen. Lucifer thought that he was as good as God and he ought to be worshipped. And he said, I will ascend the sides of the north. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God and on and on and on. And God, and God said, no, you'll be brought down to hell to the pits of it. And I don't know when time started, but it's a good my thought is that when the day iniquity was found in the devil's heart and he said, I will, the clock started ticking. Because his time was coming. He could have just destroyed him, but he, he had a plan in mind. He just cast him down and the third part of the angels that believed him, he was just getting started. He made man in his own image, but he was just getting started. The fall came. Redemption was planned and sacrifices were instrumented into the human community and God was just getting started. In spite of that, wickedness engulfed the earth till it repented God that he even made it. So he chose out a man by the name of Noah and told him to build an ark. And he did. And the flood came. Amen. And it seemed like it was the end of everything. But it wasn't. He was just getting started. And now the, the Tower of Babel takes place. And the beginning of the nations form from the Tower of Babel. And, uh, but God was just, he was just getting started. And out of Ur of the Chaldees, he brought forth a man by the name of Abram. And he took him forth in, into a land that he would show him. And he took him to what became known as Canaan land. But he was just getting started. And then he, he changed his name from Abram, which means father to exalted father, which means... I'm going to have a lot more kids than I have right now. And he had none right then. He wasn't even a father. So, so he said, I'm giving you a child of promise. And after 25 years of waiting and 25 years of promise, he finally received Isaac. But God was just getting started. And Isaac begat Esau and Jacob. And God knew all about it. And he told Rebecca what she would get. Those two wild cats in her womb are two men or people. And when they were born, God was just getting started. And then Jacob raised up the 12 patriarchs, but God was just getting started. And then they ended up in Egypt, but God was just getting started. And he brought them out of Egypt with Moses. And Moses gave them the law, but they were just getting started. And then Joshua took them into the promised land and, and they began conquering the cities. One by one by one and on and on and on, but... God was really, he was just, he was just getting started. He, he began to raise up judges and, uh, and to lead the people and prophets. Amen. But he was just getting started. And the people clamored for a king. Finally, after a total flop, he gave him one named David, man after his own heart. And I'll just drop this in your thought process. It's interesting to me that all through scripture, I'm not saying nobody never did it before. I'm sure somebody did. But God took pains to make sure only of David was it first penned. Two things. David was the first man in recorded history, scripturally, to say to God, I love you. And he was also the first man in scriptural recorded history to say, thank you. So if you want to be a man after God's own heart, you might start there. By letting him know you love him, amen, and be appreciative for the good things that he does, praise God. So when he started that with David, he was, he was, he was just getting started, amen. And David drew the plans for a temple that God would not allow him to build. And finally, Solomon builds a magnificent temple, one of the wonders of earth at that time. But he was just getting started. And then it was destroyed. Before it was destroyed, he raised up Elijah to preach to a backslidden northern kingdom. But he was just getting started. Elijah was carried away and it looked like it was over, but he was just getting started because he was going to work with Elisha. And he'd raise up other prophets, Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel and Amos. He'd raise up kings, great kings. Amen. Hezekiah, 
Josiah, amen, patriarchal prophets such as Daniel, amen, who would lead Meshach, Shadrach, Abednego. He would raise up Nehemiah, the last technically book written of the Old Testament, they believe actually it was written after Malachi, amen, be that as it may. And, 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 and we come to the end of the Old Testament and it's 400 years of silence. But he was just getting started. One day there was a priest by the name of Zacharias and he sees an angel Gabriel in the temple. And he'd never had a child. Elizabeth, they were past childbearing age. And, and he comes out and he can't speak. And, and, and they have a son named John. But God was just getting started. Hallelujah. And so we know that six months after that baby was born, there was another baby born. In Bethlehem of Judea, an angel, same angel, visited a virgin girl by the name of Mary and told her that the Messiah is coming through you. Unto us a child is born, a son is given, but he's just getting started. He was born into the world without controversy. Great is the mystery of godliness. God became flesh and dwelt among us. At the age of 12, he entered into the temple and confounded the priest and the sages. Amen. But he was just getting started. At the age of 30, he was baptized of his cousin, John. But he was just getting started. He went into the wilderness and fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. The devil came and tempted him. And he defeated him on every wise. But he was just getting started. Hallelujah. And then he began to call his 12 apostles together, but he was just getting started. He got 70 and then he got 500 and, and here was a multitude and they, and, and he would raise the dead and open blinded eyes and cause the lame to walk and feed 4,000 one time, 5,000 on another, let alone the women and children. But he was just getting started. Amen. Can I just stop here and tell you about God? He's never going to allow his past to outdo his future. This God is on a roll. You hear me? This God is on a roll. Hallelujah. Amen. And eventually there would be 500, but then there'd be 120. And then there would be 3,000 in one day. And a few months, maybe a couple of years later, there would be 5,000 in a day. Then they would fill Jerusalem, but it was just getting started. Hallelujah. Until all the way in the book of Revelation, John said, I see a number which no man could number. Woo. Hallelujah. But he's just getting started. He cleansed the temple. He upbraided the scribes and the Pharisees. He took on the Sanhedrin. But he was just getting started. And so were they. And they took him into the carnality of a backslid apostle named Judas. Who sold him. Turned him in. And he was taken. And when they began to beat on him, they were just getting started. They would beat him until his visage was marred more than any other. And that was by the time they got, Pilate got through with him. The Sanhedrin got through with him. Herod got through with him. His back looked like a plowed field, but they were just getting started. They stripped him naked. They beat a crown of thorns into his head. They nailed him to a tree. They were just getting started. They lifted him up between heaven and earth. But they were just getting started. They passed by. They made fun. The thieves to the left and the right. At one point, they both did. Finally, one of them came to himself. Amen. The apostles fled. Only John came close. There they passed by. They said, you saved others. Save yourself. And finally, after all this time and all these centuries, he lifted up his head and said, It is finished! <laughs> and to marry his mother and her sister and marry the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene and John and the other apostles 
and disciples. It was finished. All their dreams and all their hopes were buried. All they'd hoped for, all they'd wished. And if you haven't lived long enough to where someday, be it a phone call or an event or something hits you, and you feel overwhelmed, oh God, it is finished. You're just getting a little taste of Calvary. And so there for three days, they licked their wounds. But he was just getting started. He went into captivity captive. He ascended on high. He gave gifts unto men. Mary came to the sepulcher. And then Mary, she runs into the room. Here are the apostles downcast, beaten Simon Peter, who cursed him and denied him, is in the corner. He's, and she runs in and says, guess what? He's just getting started. That's really not what she said, but that's what it meant. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's just getting started. And then he started appearing to him at diverse times and telling him, tell you in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. And there they tarried. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they found out he was just getting started. Hallelujah. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And 120 people filled with the Holy Ghost speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave the utterance. But he was just getting started. Before that day was over, Peter would be preaching and 3,000 people baptized, Holy Ghost, added to the church. He was just getting started. And they filled Jerusalem with the message. And then a guy named Saul of Tarsus showed up. Persecution began. They killed the first Christian martyr, Stephen. And great lamentations were throughout the church. And Saul kept pressing in, persecuting more and more hailing men and women, compelling them, if possible, to blaspheme, etc. And so they began scattering out, leaving. And they went into Samaria. Judea, and eventually the uttermost parts of the world because he was just getting started. And then Saul of Tarsus would go to all the way to Damascus to find people in the synagogue that were Christians. And buddy, a bright light hit him down, knocked him to his knees and spoke to him and said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? He thought his world was over, but God was just getting started. Amen. He went on into Damascus. Ananias laid hands on him. Amen. He apparently gets the Holy Ghost. He'd been repenting for three days. He said, he said, why? Terrius thou, you need your sins washed away, calling on the name of the Lord. And he gets baptized in Jesus' name. We know he got the Holy Ghost because he said, I speak in tongues more than everybody. Praise God. And so he goes and he goes. And then after three years, Barnabas comes and takes him to Antioch. But God was just getting started. And then he would take him to what's modern day Turkey. City after city. Three missionary journeys. He would begin changing the world, the civilized world. Recently, they've come to find, they believe, it's starting to believe that as early as 60 AD, there's the earliest evidences of Christianity in what is known as Great Britain. I have a friend of mine that's working in the Isle of Wight. He's met an elderly gentleman that said he can take him to books in, an, in, a, in a library and prove to him that the oneness of God was alive and well, we, they know, in 500 A.D. in Great Britain. Can I tell you something? If they were there in 60 A.D., it was alive and well, because that's all there was. With God, he's just getting started. 
He's just getting started. And we can talk about on down through the centuries and, and, and the things that would happen and take place here and there around the world. There's evidences of it. There's always been a church. Can I tell you, there has always been a church. There's always, the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. But as far as North America is concerned, and, and I pastored a man from 1977, July 1st, 77 to July 1st, 81. And his name was David Lee Floyd. When I first took the church, there was about 35 people, and, and he wasn't there the first two weeks, him and his wife, Edith, and, and the, the, the pastor that was leaving, he told me, he said, he said, now there's an old man in this church named David Floyd and said he knows a lot about early Pentecost. So I went and I finally found him on a dirt road and drove by his house twice because tall brush had grown up so much and finally broke through there and saw the dark green little tar paper shack, the stacks of newspapers. God knows how many cats they had in that house. And it smelled like it. And, and here was this old couple. And, uh, and so I, I'm talking to him. My wife and I are talking to him. And we moved him out of there post haste. Got him a house by us. And, and one thing, but anyway, uh, I said, Brother Floyd, I, I hear you know a lot about early Pentecost. And from my earliest days when I got saved, I was intrigued with the history of Pentecost. And, and he said, yes. I said, when did you get the Holy Ghost? He said, 1910. 1910? Yes. I said, when did you get the uh, revelation of Jesus' name? He said, 1915. I said, where at? He said, Houston, Texas. He said, Charlie Smith came. I said, wait, wait, not Charlie Smith of Elton Bible Conference fame. Yeah, yeah, Charlie. Uh, Charlie and I went to Elton Conference together. He said, him and I both preached the oneness of God there. He said, he was law and I was grace, but we brought it. I said, so you got the revelation of the oneness under, under Charlie Smith's ministry? Yes, yes. And you were at the Belton Bible Conference? Yes. And you were there for all the baptisms? Yes. That's when every Pentecostal church in Louisiana became oneness. Belton Bible Conference, 1915. And he knew the heroes. He knew, he knew G.T. Haywood very well. He knew Charles Fox Parham, of Topeka fame. He, had, he wrote back and forth letters to Frank Bartleman. He worked with E.N. Bell and, and, and Howard Goss and, and D.C. Opperman. He had an orphanage of 80-some kids when uh, D.C. Opperman had the Bible School at Minnesota Springs Hotel in, Little, I mean, in Eureka Springs, Arkansas. They had... They had uh, 80 kids one time and at that orphanage and they decided to put on a crusade for the town and and uh, so they were there and so that was the night that the Bible kids Bible school kids would be preaching and this and that but the, the orphanage kids were singing and one night when they were on the platform singing there was 80 some kids and the Holy Ghost hit and everybody was shouting and there was people out and they were shouting and worshiping and the kids were dancing and screaming and he said Brother Booker it was like a maestro was leading it and all of a sudden the maestro brought down the baton and everything stopped. The singing, the kids, the dancing, the shouting, all over the entire theater. Everything stopped. And all eyes went to the front. There was one little girl named Dorothy. And Dorothy was still dancing in the Holy Ghost. And they had the orchestra pit in those days down there. And then up here was the seating, and here was the pulpit, and it was up against the edge of the platform. And while all eyes were on Dorothy, this 11-year-old girl stepped off into the orchestra pit. But she didn't fall in front of everybody's eyes. She danced in midair all the way around, spinning around in midair. And when she came to the other side, the split second her foot hit the platform, the maestro brought back up the baton and everybody, Wah! And he said, Brother Booker, 200 people received the Holy Ghost. Over 200 people received the Holy Ghost because of that one miracle. But I'm going to tell you something. He was just getting started. This God, this God, 
Miss God was just getting started. Hallelujah. Amen. Can I put it modern day vernacular? You ain't seen nothing yet. Praise God. My Bible speaks of us going faith to faith, glory to glory, victory to victory. And when it comes to this God, we got to catch a revelation. He's always just getting started. He's always just getting started. This is why Isaiah 9, 7, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Can I tell you something? If you're not hooked up into the kingdom of God, you are in something finite. Your days are numbered. It's going to be here today and gone tomorrow. It's going to be like the chaff. Amen. The flowers of the field. It's bright and shiny today and it's dead tomorrow. Honey, we need to get into something eternal. And you think these people worshiping are odd? Buddy, let me tell you, they've hooked into the only thing that's going to get better and better and better because he's just getting started and he ain't seen nothing yet. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David to establish it, to order it, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Again, God will never allow his past, never to be greater than his future. That's not his nature. Now, in the earth, it's the law of thermodynamics things just get worse and you know you buy a car and it's nice and new you don't keep it up with lots and lots of money honey it's going to rot under your feet you got to work to keep houses up you got you got to buy new clothes you got to do because the law of thermodynamics and it kind of works in the human body case in point now when brother Sutton and I got saved I got saved in 72 he got saved in 74 We were hippies. Life's not fair. He's still springy. He's still, ah! I'm just, I hang him in, I'm hanging in there, baby. Hallelujah. My spirit's there. My body just won't cooperate. Hallelujah. It's, a, it's, this, it's this business of this law of thermodynamics, but there's a day coming. I'm going to have a new body. I'm going to have a new body. Hallelujah. It's time to get serious with God. Hallelujah. It's time. Do you understand? Don't let your life finish up on the short end of eternity. He's just getting started. Now, in 1974, January, Brother Barry Sutton got married to that lady sitting next to him. Brother Sutton, you didn't know God in those days. But was that a God thing? And guess what? Gift from heaven. And God was just getting started. Because in August of the same year, they ended up in a church. They repented of their sins. They were baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost. But God was just getting started. I'm cutting through a whole lot of fresh starts. But in 1987, they came and started a church in January 1st, 1987. But God was just getting started. Four years later, in 1991, they bought the red building over yonder. And he told me just before service, if I got it right, there was only one original wall that had not been changed. That means there was a whole lot of remodeling going on. And, every, and I think they remodeled that one deal three or four times. Every time they remodeled it, no doubt they were excited. But God was just getting started. <laughs> then they'd remodel it again, and God was just getting started. Then they'd remodel it again, and God, I remember preaching for him. In, 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 it was like a small shotgun deal. And then you doubled that. And, it was, and then you got the fan-shaped auditorium. But he was just getting started. Because 18 months ago, 
you got in here. And this God is just getting started. They've been here 31 years and God's just getting started. I cannot wait when I come back. It ain't going to be that long before I come back. But it ain't going to be that long before I come back. This bottom floor is going to be packed out just like you were in the uh, floor over there. Because we've been there. You know what I say at this point? When we, when we, we, got, we were about like this in our church, I said, enjoy the room while you've got it. Because he's just getting started. And then I can't wait to come back. And that's going to be packed out. And when that happens, God's just getting started. And I'm just going to be neat to figure out where the posts are going to be when you kick that out. And then when you... I posted a picture of this place tonight. I pulled up. I said, have mercy. This building's endless. And God's just getting started. Because he loves you and he loves this city. Hallelujah. NASA spends, in fact, musicians come. NASA spends $330 million to try and hit a passing comet. You know what I say to that? Who gives a rip? Because my Bible tells me the day's coming. The heavens are going to roll up like a scroll. And there's going to be a new heavens and a new earth. And a city come down from God. Woo. 12,000 furlongs, 1,500 miles square, square, square. That is from Los Angeles, that's the Pacific Ocean, to halfway across America to Tulsa, Oklahoma. That's from Los Angeles to a little bit short of Dawson Creek, Yukon. And it's 1,500 miles high. The space station is 250 miles into the heavens. The new earth will be six times higher than our... The the new Jerusalem will be six times higher than where the space station is right now. But my Bible says of the increase of his government... There shall be no end. When he does that, he's just getting started. Let's stand. I want you to look around at your neighbor and say, hey, he's just getting started. If you've had the Holy Ghost less than a year, he's just getting started. If you've had it less than a day, he's just getting started. If you've had it for 50 years, he's just getting started. Is anybody glad that you've got in on the ground floor? You say, no, Abraham is the ground floor. Oh, no, no. He's just getting started, man. Anything you do in this earth is ground floor. Now you say, boy, what's going to happen? I have no idea. I don't know what he's going to do. Anybody tells you what he's All I know is going to be a new heaven and a new earth. So that's his problem. He'll take care of it. I just want to make sure I got my fingers dug into the, into the golden streets. We're here tonight in the only eternal thing, the only eternal kingdom. 
because he loves you. He brought you tonight. If you're here tonight, you say, well, I'm okay. I don't need that. I got a job. I get two weeks vacation a year, you know. I got a 401k. I got a relatively new car. I'm going to be all right. Buddy, that's not even chicken feed compared to what by the mercies of God we've tied into and listen I don't deserve none of this we were hippies we'd shoot me and my buddies we'd shoot cigarettes out of each other's mouths and tin cans off our heads while we were drunk with 22 pistols can I tell you God said I got a better kingdom son I got a plan for the ages and he wants every one of us to be part of it if you want to come down here and just in your head and say in Jesus thank you that you let me be a part of this then step out where you are and come on down he's just getting started and if you're here tonight and you've not yet repented of your sins or received the Holy Ghost. Come on, sir! He's just getting started! He wants to do something beautiful in your world. He wants to do something mighty in your world. Yes, yes, yes.